So um, there are a lot of reasons why the topic of um, uh, the topic of aliens is a little bit um, brings mixed, mixed feelings. So uh, when you're talking about aliens in the way that we do in our society, it's in reference to um, the powers that are mentioned in Genesis chapter six, in the script of Enki, in the Egyptian um, scrolls, the ones that talk about people like um, people like uh, what are, um, the the Egyptian gods. There's some of them who are kind of given supernatural uh, supernatural placement in the society. So these are the things that we're talking about. We're also um, talking about the historical uh, the historical rulers of uh, the kingdom of Babylon. Uh, we are talking about the Hindu mythological uh, kings and even gods, uh, the the ranks of Ram, Krishna, who are believed to be uh, even now they believed to be avatars, somehow, but they believed to actually be historical uh, historical uh, actors. So, um, when anybody says aliens, these are the, uh, the powers that should come to your mind. They're the beings that uh, were, if, were seen by our grandmothers. My grandmother told us about uh, giants roaming their land when she was a teen. So these are the kind, okay, maybe giants is, uh, may not be that, because we have these references in the book of Genesis and the book of... Uh, the book of uh, in many ancient scripts and in the book of Enoch, of the intermingling of these aliens with the uh, with the populace of the earth, and this is why also their importance cannot be overlooked, because out of all the angelic beings of the universe, and they're countless, the universe is as uh, as huge as nothing. So uh, you can imagine. Um, how far it extends it's uh, so far they're still counting galaxies in their billions and they haven't stopped counting the ends of the universe cannot be uh, cannot be seen by whatever equipments that we have now so um, so when you talk about aliens we talk about all these beings that are uh, belong to the group that could be Renowned as others, and also belong to a very specific, a very specific um, groups, a very specific group that has actually um, lived upon the earth, has interacted uh, with humans, has even uh, be responsible for creating civilization, uh, civilizations. Um, I don't know if you've had um, the historical depictions, which are now, of course, called myths of the uh, kingdom of Atlantis, of the, uh, the various uh, ancient Hindu um, uh, Ram and Krishna and um, uh, especially it's so defined in the Hindu culture that most of their gods at least at one time was a ruler somehow, either a king or a, or a, 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 a part of the council of the, of the king. So this uh, should show you the kind of level that these beings occupied not so long ago. Um, in human history and it should also um, tell you the seriousness by which we should take um, the possibility that uh, they may not um, there's a reason why they came and that reason could be a recurring reason there's a reason why they left which could also be a recurring reason if you uh, study uh, the uh, the Hindu texts about the creation and destruction of the worlds they follow a certain um, a certain pattern so the smallest systems have a, a shorter pattern lasting a few years then as you expand yourself wider into the universe the years multiply to the um, uh, until it reaches a cycle of um, a billion which they believe that cycle is a destructive cycle and um, it's a cycle that affects a wider region of the universe and it's kind of a something that they look forward to as the beginning of time. So when I'm talking about cycles, 
I'm talking about uh, on the level of the earth, this will manifest uh, in form of a nova. Also, uh, in the wider uh, neighborhood, it will also manifest um, in the form of multiple novas because the trigger will be something bigger than the sun. Will be something that is uh, the central, uh, something that is being orbited by the sun basically and other systems that are uh, found within the, um, the galaxy. You see, we don't know enough uh, about even the, context of the contents of the galaxy to speak authoritatively. We don't know enough about the content, contents of, um, uh, of the universe and the collections because uh, lately they've been saying that uh, the, um, the galaxy are grouping themselves when you look um, into them by our powerful telescopes but they are uh, uh, seen to create a pattern and to group into clusters. So every cluster has something that is binding them together. And most of the time, this thing that binds together is also the same thing that triggers the disintegration. For example, a nova, a macro nova or a micro nova. If our sun went nova right now, most of the earth would have to start from scratch, from the stone age, which we told uh, we started from a few years ago. We'd have to start, and it wouldn't be um, everybody who would get a chance to start over. It would be just one or two very lucky ones that happened to be in a place that could not be touched. And there are no places, there are not so many places that cannot be touched. You see, in Revelation, it is written that um, there's a time when at, at some point that uh, the writer cries that um, the kings of the earth uh, and its rulers have hidden in uh, um, hidden in caves and they are crying to the mountains and telling them swallow us because of the day of wrath basically any reference to the day of wrath is a reference to a cycle of destruction which uh, is dictated to the uh, by the attractors for example in the middle of our galaxy and in the middle of the other galaxies there's a black hole this black hole is so powerful that even now as we are it's um, it's binding us to the um, to the circle or to the arms of the galaxy. Most of the planets are racing towards the center of the galaxy because the black hole is so attractive magnetically. So many multiple times more than the sun, and um, I think it must be a few billion times more than the sun in the in terms of the kind of attraction that it has that it is holding. Because you see, it's been um, drawing planets unto itself. So remember, these are several planets being drawn together. The magnetic power of the planets are joined. The reaction that comes of these uh, multiple magnets being bound together is so extreme that it turns them into nothing like that. So from our point of perspective, and the point of the perspective um, of the scientists, we're looking at, uh, because this is something that they're seeing, there's something called uh, spaghettification, which is something that they, um, I don't know if they've seen or it's just another conjecture from our good scientists. Um, they call something uh, spaghettification, where planets that are attracted to that thing are stretched so wide that um, the mass of the planet becomes disintegrated and um, encycles the, uh, the black hole before disappearing. And from this reaction, because that's like a, I don't know what, how powerful a bomb would have to be to cause the same reaction. First of all, not even um, crack, but stretch it so wide that every atom separates from each other to the extent that it disappears. And that's why the Earth has a lot of, uh, no, the Earth, the universe has a lot of um, substances. Uh, which are believed to be charged ions that can only be seen by infrared cameras. Reason. These are ions that are so charged up, so far from each other, and so magnetically powerful that upon contact with dead stars, they ignite them into um, the likeness of the sun, into nova, leaving them shining um, in the emptiness of the universe. When you hear the bathing of stars, this is what they're referring to. They're referring to an encounter between a dead star, many times it's really a dead star, and this um, charged dust. 
this substance that cannot be um, touched but it's uh, so disintegrated that you know the naked eye cannot see it and it's one of the most powerful forces of the earth that uh, from a distance we um whenever it touches an area in the darkness everything starts to glow because all um, all the brown dwarfs and the red dwarfs immediately react to that uh, iron and that um, that's the cycle of destruction <laughs>